Got it. Here they come. Game time, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Andrea's on here. Hello, Andrea. Hello. Oh, hello. Uh, hello. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, wrong button. <laughs> I, I don't think when, um, where were we? Uh, when we were doing the little holiday tour with Dana a couple weeks ago, I saw you from afar. I didn't get to come say hi. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, well, good to see you. <laughs> you as well, yes. Thank you. Here comes everybody. Is everybody prepared for Christmas? We got some last minute shopping going on. I'm done. You're done? Good for you. Yep, yep. Today is technically my last day. Because I have to have two days for a honeydew list from a honey that just, Lord help me. Oh, she's still sick. <laughs> uh, yes, she is deep in congestion. Oh. Yeah, she'll be good to go. Yeah. Okay, everybody, let's dive in some coaching here. Normally what we do, I see some new names. I see some uh, uh, experienced names that have been on here. I want to open this up for everybody. This is going to be a group coaching session. And what I mean by that is we're going to discuss the opportunities you guys have right now. Remember, for those that are new, opportunities are where are we not performing at the highest level? So what are some of your opportunities that you have had and or reflected on this past year that we could talk about in the next hour? Opportunities, opportunities. Where yeah. we can improve, is that what you're saying? Correct. Okay, yeah. where, so where I definitely can say for me, um, being more purposeful with my time is where I definitely could see some improvement. Okay. Mine would be to utilize command more. Mm. Learn. Um, I think I know what I'm doing. And then when I try to do it, it doesn't work. And then it takes me forever to go back to it and try to figure it out. Gotcha. Who else? Do we, do we do we have just some hanger honors here who just want to come be part of the party? Looks like it. Unmute yourself. Come on. Where are your opportunities right now? We have two brave souls. Where are your opportunities? There's Jill. Hello, Jill. Hi. I'm actually not sure yet because I worked for builders for 21 years and I just took my test a couple months ago. So I'm new to this side of the business. So I don't know yet where my opportunities are. Gotcha. Congratulations. Nice. Well, well, welcome to the wild and crazy world of real estate. Thank you. On this side. So wait a minute, you worked for a builder? Is that what you said? Yeah, I worked for uh, DR Horton, then MI, then Pulte as a construction manager, then a sales consultant, then a GSM. And I decided to enough for putting money in other people's pockets. I decided to do it for myself. So excellent. Nice. Very good. And, and what part of the country are you in? I'm in Columbus, Ohio. Gotcha. Okay, perfect. So nice. The Danis thing like a week and a half ago. So that's why I was like, ooh, I need to go to Adam's coaching thing. <laughs> well, here we are. Okay. Well, what are you most excited about then for this new adventure that you have going? Um, I just have some really big goals. And so I've been doing all the things that I need to be doing as far as lead generation and seed planting and all that kind of stuff. I'm just really excited for the holidays to be over to kind of, you know, because everyone's kind of gone a little bit dormant right now, you yep. know, open houses are a little bit more quiet, all that kind of stuff. And so, um, so yeah, I'm just excited for the new year and to, uh, for the market to pick up a little bit, you know. So. What, what do you feel moving into this new vertical that you don't know yet? Um, so I have never done a listing presentation. People always um, came to my model. And so I've never done a listing presentation. Okay. What but else? I don't you know there's seasoned agents on the call. And so I don't want to bore them with things that they've done a million times. Listen, uh, y'all three are the only ones that are talking. So no one else is talking right now. And I, you're the only ones I can see. So you guys get all the attention. <laughs> <laughs> and anything else that you don't know yet that we can touch on here? Because we can mastermind that. That's that's fun to do. Listen presentation. Gotcha. Okay. I Perfect. actually, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I was one. multi. There, there I go. was multitasking. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I actually wouldn't mind going through the whole listing presentation. I've only done a few, um, so that wouldn't um, that would be something good to kind of go through if, if others are interested as well. If not. 
maybe I can make time with Jill and uh, Andrea or somebody to go through one as well. I've done a ton of buyers, but not listing. Okay, got it. Perfect. Love it. We can we can definitely talk about that. Anything else? Oops. Anything else? Okay. Different ways to lead, Jen. Say it again, Stacey. Different ways to lead, Jen. Okay, love it. To lead, Jen. What is your go-to right now? Just curious. Texting, emailing, and um, whatever I can figure out how to do on command. Okay. <laughs> I'm one of those terrified people of phone calls, so. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like command might be a thorn in your side. I think that's the second time that I've heard whatever I can figure out in command. Yeah. Okay, got it. Okay, so we got texting, we got emailing right now. Perfect. Okay. Anybody else? Opportunities. We're talking opportunities to get better right now. What are your opportunities? Okay. So Sorry, I I'm, I've just joined in. I mean, this is all completely new to me, so I am... And just sit back in the background and see what it's all about because it all sounds quite over my head at this point in time but I might get into it in a moment <laughs> I love it so Vanessa you are new to real estate nope no what mm -hmm. what is what is new to you this group coaching yes okay gotcha yeah. gotcha yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah how long you been in real estate um 30 years 30 years that's fantastic can anybody beat 30 years Ooh, that's some good stuff right there. That is amazing. Uh, okay, I want to, before we dive into this group coaching stuff, this is really good. we got some good topics here that we will definitely cover. How many people have started reflecting on this past year? Have you started reflecting? Oh, you all have. Great. Curious, what are some of the actions that you guys have done to reflect? We actually have done some team planning around this past year. Say it again, and Andrew. Someone, oh, I'm sorry. If, if someone else started talking at the same time, my apologies. Um, okay. No, what I was saying is like my team and I, we've just recently sat down and kind of started talking about, you know, this last year, what we thought worked, what we thought didn't work, and kind of just to make sure that we're not wasting time with things that don't necessarily work for this upcoming year. And we can take that energy and put it where it will do much better. Okay, perfect. Um, I love that. And what did you find from that experience? What did, what did you come away with? I found that what I, what some one person might thought was like a really awesome thing that went off well, the other people were like, oh, like I really thought that was a bust, you know? So it, it was interesting to see people's versions of what success looked like to right. them, right? Yeah, that's good. That's really yeah. good. So this is what I'm having and challenging every single, and I've challenged every single one of my clients and my coaches right now and I love, inside of I Love Coaching is talking to them about going back every single, going back to their calendar and looking at every single month, looking at every single month and asking these three questions. What did I experience? What did I learn? And where were my opportunities that month? Right? So what did I experience? What did I learn? And what were my opportunities that month? And what's really neat is when they come back and they literally want to share with you everything that they experienced, learning with the opportunities because they had forgotten, right? They had forgotten what happened in January, February, March, April, May. They'd forgotten. I had one guy come prior to doing the reflection. He's like, you know what I want to do next year? I need, I need more vacations. I said, how many vacations did you take this year? And he said, one. I said, okay. So he comes back to his coaching call today and he says, you know what I got to share with you? I was like, what was that? He goes, I took four vacations this year and I completely forgot about the other three. <laughs> and I thought, goodness gracious, either it was a bad vacation or you just have a really bad memory. Um, so that's number one. Go into your calendar. Look at your calendar. Look at your past clients that you've worked with. Jill, coming from the new construction space, right? What, who were the people that you were working with? And, and I'm just rhetorical, but who were the people that you were working with, right? And that could been potentially transition over to uh, general brokerage now. Um, do that January through December. That's action number one. Action number two, you've probably heard Dana talk about this. John Maxwell teaches us that we need to go back into our photos, right? Go back into your photos 
And what John makes us do every single year is go through all of our photos and we can highlight anywhere between or, or favor five to 10 of them. And we have to do the same thing. What did we experience? What did we learn? And what was our opportunity from that picture? Right, but I would challenge you all to go, go take your pictures and start in January. And look at all of your experiences. Look at all of your lessons. Look at all of the things that you accomplished. Because here's what we know. 365 days. Gang, that's a lot of time. That is a lot of time for experiences, learning, and opportunities. Okay. Because here's the last thing I'll say. I'm getting off my preacher uh, little, little podium here. Is y'all are stepping into the same river next year that's called real estate. Right? We've got someone on here that's been doing it for 30 years into that same river, but you are not stepping in that river the same person because of the experience from January to December. You're not the same person. We feel like we're the same person, but we're not, right? We're really, really not because of our experiences and our learning and our opportunities, but you have to expose those to be able to move them forward. Okay. Uh, so that's what I would challenge everybody to do is that. Write it down, your three things. Secondly. It's business planning should be completed. Does everyone have their business plans completed for 2023? Show of hands. We've got a yes. We've got a no. We've got a no. We've got some honest people. I love it. So those that don't have them finished, curious what's stopping you and when do you intend on having them completed? We've got a no from Kelsey. Thank you, Kelsey. Yes. Stacy. I um, feel like just from over the last couple of months, all of the the, um, all the great stuff that you and Dana and everybody has poured into me. And I have like five different notepads and all these things that I want to implement. We started our 12 month calendar and started putting down, you know, our touches for them each month, but that's not complete. And then I started working. There's just so much that I'm overwhelmed trying to prioritize it and make sure that it's in place I wanted it to be in place by the first and now I'm like still have these five notepads and I feel like I'm like, okay, we'll copy this over here and then copy this over here and do this and do that. And now I'm still in the same spot with just more notes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And command. No, I'm totally kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. So Stacey, that, thank you. And then Melinda, you shook your head no too. So, so what has stopped okay. you and when do you intend on completing it? Well, I, so I have a couple of excuses. One is I also work full time currently still. Um, so I am off for the next 10 days before I go out of the country. So I plan to have it done before I leave. Um, so at least within the next 10 days. And then I did take Dana's business planning, um, class that was at the downtown Columbus. Um, so that has really helped. And I've been going through those materials and I have a good draft started. I just have to kind of tweak it and make some adjustments. Perfect. Okay, great. Excellent. Is there anything for the, uh, see, I think we had someone else who was it, um, uh, Kelsey also said no. Uh, is there anything that we can cover in the opportunity space here of business planning that we can share with everybody? So, so Stacey, is there anything there? I heard that we have a lot of overwhelm going on in your world. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Got and, it. and it's not easy. Like to, to like, I'm like, okay, well, here's my list. I'll do this. Like I say, I was trying to yesterday export all my contacts from Google to import into command. Well, it, it didn't work. So now I'm like, well, crap. <laughs> you know I'm like oh that's an easy one I'll just I googled it figured out how to do it and then it didn't work so now that's not completed and it's now a thorn in my side I gotcha. can help you with that Stacy okay. I was say I could help you too if you need Thank help you. okay so okay so we're talking about business planning and let me ask you this I'm going to take you to a different different direction here and then we're going to get into these topics I want to talk about whole life planning Okay, we have a tendency in real estate or as entrepreneurs, uh, I don't know who all is on the, on the call here, but I would say mostly real estate, is we plan real estate. We plan our real estate sales. We plan our profit. We plan the money that we want to make. What about health? What about relationships? What about spirituality? What about those types of things? What about the, the whole life approach to becoming a whole life millionaire, not just a business millionaire. It's great to make a lot of money. 
And what I have found is I have met people, as we probably all have, who have a lot of money, but they are miserable or they're out of shape or their health is horrible, right? So what have you done in the whole life planning space to really take a hard look at who, what, where, when, how of yourself, that beautiful person that you see in the mirror? I'm not going to get all airy-fairy on you, but at the same time, guys, what are we doing there to plan? I want to share with you, and again, if you were at our summit this year, you we, we went over this. Uh, this is called our one sheet. We have a one sheet that we fill out. Let me share my screen. I will show it with you all. And I will be happy to give this to everybody. And I think we talked about this on a few calls uh, earlier um, or last month. This is what's called the one sheet. Okay, a one sheet, I want you to think of this kind of like a, as a baseball card. You remember old school baseball cards? The athlete was on the front and all their stats was on the back. This is kind of that. This is you. This is you as a snapshot. This is you as goal oriented. This is you as moving forward in whatever direction you want to. But I want to walk you through this here real quick because this is you becoming a whole life millionaire. Right. And again, you can remove the word million. You can call whatever you want, billionaire, trillionaire. You can say whatever, healthy, whatever, whole life, you being healthy. But we have a circle, right? If you think of your life, you have a circle. And that circle or a wheel has spokes to it. We have a tendency, though, as entrepreneurs and business owners to focus on one spoke. And that's usually our vertical, whether that's real estate, whether that's whatever you're making money in. This, though, will give you a bigger picture of the whole thing. So let's look at this real quick. At the very top, I put financial freedom percentager. What does that mean? That means how much passive income are you making that then covers your monthly expenses? Okay, and I'll give you a simple little example. Um, and, and what is passive income? Passive income is doing something once and getting paid for it over and over and over. What are the streams of passive income? There's many of them. You guys all inside of KW have a great opportunity called profit share. Right. There's real estate investing. There's there's syndication investing. There's business to business buying. There's real estate stocks. Do we have any movie stars or or, or um, songwriters on here or, or or artists of that sort? Those people get royalties. Right. That is a passive income that goes on your horizontal income stream line, which I will blow up right here. Right there. You can see it. That goes right there. Then you have your vertical income, which is the money you make while you're standing up. We call horizontal money while you're sleeping, vertical income while you're standing up. Then we go to expenses. Okay, let's go back to horizontal. Let's say you make 100,000 of horizontal or passive income. Let's say your expenses for the year are 100,000. Your financial freedom percentager is 100% because 100% of your passive covers your expenses. Now, let's say that your passive income is only 50,000 and your expenses are 100,000. You are a 50 percenter, 25,000, 25 percent, and so on and so forth. If you don't make any passive income, there is zero judgment. You're just at a zero percentager, which means that you make money while you're standing up. And while you're sleeping, you're not making money. Why is this important? It's not. It's only important if you choose for it to be important. And why do I think that this is important for me? Is because there's a time and place where I am not going to be standing up working while passive income or my dollars have been working for me. And if I choose to go to the Bahamas or wherever I want to go when it's cold here in Charleston, I'm a bald-headed guy that doesn't like to be cold, I can go there and not have to worry about anything else, right? So that's that's the vision there. On this one sheet, you'll also see taxes. You'll see total tax expenses. You'll see left to invest. Are we tracking how much money we have left to invest? Are we tracking how much we actually invested, right? You have three buckets to fill at any one given time. Your past bucket, and this is money I'm talking about. Your past bucket, which is your debts from yesterday. You've got your present bucket, which is your lifestyle. Then you have your future bucket, which is tomorrow's money. Okay. So as you're looking at your business plan for 2023 in the financial space, remember you're, you're filling three buckets, past, present, and future. And then we have your net worth. Okay, if you're not calculating your net worth, that's okay. Start tracking that. Because again, this is your worth as it relates to financial space. Okay, only financial space. 
This isn't your identity here. This is the vehicle that's making, uh, helping you make choices in life. Your net worth is your assets minus your liabilities. Okay, whatever that is, that's your assets minus your liabilities. Life happiness index, real quick. That's a whole nother calculation, which we have a one sheet, if you will, on steroids. I'd be happy to give everybody that's an Excel spreadsheet. And we track 12 different, 12 different spaces, right? That goes from how much water are you drinking to exercising, to your romance in your world, to your relationships, to your uh, dollar productivity per hour, right? We're tracking all these things. So you can say what your life happiness index is. Okay, moving on. The next two things. This year, 2022, what were your top five highs from this year? That's your reflection time. Look at the next one to the right. Next year, 2023, what are you most excited about for next year? What is it? Totally your call. Ah, oh, my favorite, the bucket list item. Oh, the bucket list items. Put in here whatever you want to write or do before you kick the bucket. Some people make this in a year, right? Some people do it as, as, as far out as they want to go, right? I'll give you some of mine. Mine are to speak at a grad, college graduation before I'm 55. I want to be able to donate a million dollars before I'm 55. When my son graduates college, I want to take him to all of the Formula One races in a calendar year. Um, what else do we have? Oh, I want to dance at my great grandkids wedding. That's another bucket list item that I want to do. So again, you create your own there. But again, this is your wheel of life. Let's go to the, let's go to your let's go to you. Let's go to your body. Your weight, your body fat percentage, your resting heart rate, your blood pressure, your life expectancy, your biological age. So many people skip this part when I'm coaching them. Adam, you don't need to know that. I don't care to know that. Y'all need to know that. You need to know that based on the person in the mirror. Are you a healthy human being? There's no judgment if you are or you aren't, but I'm going to tell you, none of, these, none of these other goals matter if you're not healthy, okay? if you're not healthy. The last two parts here, we have your wheel of life. So your physical training, nutrition, put two SMART goals there. Wellness, me meditation, and spirituality, put two goals there. SMART goals, measurable goals. Leadership, financial planning, investing, branding, sales, and recruiting, romance, parenting, community, self. And the last thing we put on here is what do you need help with? And what is one thing you want us to hold you accountable for? Okay. <laughs> I have all the people that I coach fill this out. They send this to me, and then we track this on a monthly and quarterly basis. This is what we. This is what I help people with related to them achieving their goals, right? And you can break it down. Like for example, you guys were talking about wanting to talk about listing presentations. That's fantastic. But if you think about it as this whole sheet right here, think about how small that listing presentation is to the whole of your wheel of life, right? Isn't that kind of fun to think? Think about how small that really is in, in comparison to everything else that you were looking to accomplish related to you as a whole life millionaire. Okay, so happy to share that with everybody. Uh, I think actually the one team has that so they can send it out uh, to everybody on the call. But again, you want to put in your email address or you want to email me or text me, adam at ilovecoachingco.com. I'll be happy to shoot this over to you. Okay. What do you think about this? What, what, where, where are your heads right now? What, give me some feedback, some aha, some thoughts, some, gosh, you talk way too much, Adam. Let me hear what you have to say. <laughs> what are you thinking right now? Where'd you go? I think this is great, really, because you said it when you very first started this whole thing and pulling that sheet up is that, you know, when it comes to, you know, goal setting and things like that, we're always, you know, in the mindset of business and, you know, those own business goals versus like you yeah, you know, and everything else that matters. Yeah. That's the fun part. When we pay attention yeah. to that, what shows up. Yeah. Right? A newer version of yourself. Who else? Stacey, I'm sorry. There was no outlook or uh, no, no command on here, but we will. Talk <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I mean, I remember doing this and I, I don't have like, um, like um, my freedom, financial freedom percentager. I, mm -hmm. I got to figure that. I don't know that, but I did pretty good on filling in at least um, all of the other stuff. But now looking at it, like command isn't on here because that 
just came into when I started doing business planning for next year and realizing there's so much I'm not that's available on command that I can't that I'm not utilizing. Um, right. So I need to put that in here too. Okay, perfect. Anybody else? Where'd you go when we talked about this? What'd you think? I've got something. Um, hey, Daria. So I, hi, Adam. I use this, the wheel of life exercise with the agents that I have at my firm uh, about in November. And it was really eye-opening. A lot of them, first of all, had never seen it. So they're very appreciative because they didn't understand how things, if, if everything in your life is kind of out of whack, then you've got to address all those pieces. Like nothing will always be together, but mm -hmm. you know, like we talked about counterbalances and balances, et cetera. But it really made me reflect on myself because I wasn't, I was like not walking the walk or talking the talk, right? I was very easily being able to explain it to them and, oh, you need to work out and you need to have mindset and you need to, you know, devote time to your business, your family. But I was, I was not doing that myself. So having the exercise with them really opened my eyes to how I needed to change my schedule, which has been, you know, in a, a work in progress, but it's getting better. So mm -hmm. I love the wheel of life exercise. I think it's extremely helpful in the grand scheme of things. Good, good, great feedback there. And thanks for sharing that. That's, that's really good. I, I love empowering people to go share this with their teams or their, their companies or whatever it may be. And again, this is, I did not create this. This I took from Go Abundance, which is the group that I belong to, but here, you know, my, mine lives on my desk, right? And so I'm constantly writing all over i'm putting check marks by stuff that i've accomplished this this lives with me right this is this is my time block right because someone said more purposeful time we're going to talk about that in a second this is this this is what lives in my calendar right accomplishing these things live in my calendar um because without that it's it's it doesn't it doesn't matter you can just write stuff on a sheet of paper it doesn't matter um, this, this is kind of fun. You guys know me uh, relatively well. I'm a tracker, right? I track literally as much as I can related to this. Um, and I had a goal, uh, which again, most of you know, from the standpoint of my health focus, um, to hit the exercise 275 times this year. Today was day 275. I was so excited that in my tracker, I, I showed that. And I, I think I might've even threw it on the, uh, on the gram, uh, but I was I was not even really paying attention as I would go through my morning routine and I track it. I went in there and sure, sure enough, there was 275. I was like, oh, I didn't even know that today was day 275. Uh, and then, of course, I went in to tell Dana and she was like, you did what? Why, why did you do that 275 times? I was like, honey, no, 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 that's fine. Yeah, I'm joking. Um, she was very supportive. So let's talk about more purposeful time. Who was it that said that? I can't remember. Uh, Andrea, tell me more about that. In your own words, define purposeful. What does that mean to you specifically? Okay. Well, okay. So you obviously know my history and, mm -hmm. you know, being with KW and being in leadership and everything like that. And here, here's my, my biggest struggle, I feel, is that clearly, I mean... <laughs> Having been around for as long as I have, I know everything that needs to get done. I know what I need to be doing, you know, from nine or eight until 10 or nine until 11 or whatever that looks like. And I, like I've, you know, starting selling in, I mean, basically we can just call it April. Then I got married and then went to, on my honeymoon. So let's call it May, you know, mm -hmm. I had an amazing year, you know, mm -hmm. I feel that it was, it just happened and it was easy and all of it. But so now that things are changing a little bit in this market, I need to like, I don't even know where I'm going with it, but I, I know what I need to do. I'm not doing it. And if I were to do it, what could my life look like? And these are things that I ask myself all the time. Um, but I feel that like my launch into selling was like such a great success that like, I need to like stop riding this float and like, mm -hmm. just get at it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So this mm -hmm. is like feeling more structured in my day to day, I think would be very beneficial to me um, right. and making me feel like I am purposeful with my goals and, you know, things like that. And I really did throw it out there. I'm like, oh, I would love it if I could help 25 people, you know, buy or sell from the time that I was out of leadership until the end of the year. And I very much hit that. And I'm like, I oh, wow, you know, cool. Like, and I didn't even try. Whoa. You know, so like 
what you know so like just to know I don't know I think it's like my own thing I'm like oh well you know I don't need to be that purposeful with my time but at the same time like I know damn well I need to (laughs) you know what I mean because I mean not only could I just pay for my kids college on my own and you know all these other things like what else could there be for this whole life Mm -hmm. so that's my internal struggle like on the daily (laughs) well again it's I want to here's what I heard you say. I asked what your definition of purpose was. And Mm -hmm. you said a more structured day, Mm -hmm. a more structured day to achieve whatever you've set out to achieve. Right. Um, Who else, before we we dive into that, who else feels that they would like to have more purposeful time next year? Well, the show of hands, anybody else? Okay. We got a yes. We got a head, head nodding, nodding. Um, Okay, good. What has caused you not to be purposeful with your time right now? Let's let's go backwards. Anybody that said yes, well, what has caused you not to have the purposeful time that you want to have? Mine is not being a morning person. And I know they say when the morning, when the day, and it's a real struggle for me to get up and get moving. And I know that that's, something I need to change, but it's really, really hard for me. Okay. So, so getting up and getting moving is, is not your cup of tea, we'll say. Yeah. It has not been your cup of tea. Yeah. I mean, I even, I got a trainer this year, so I was all proud about that, but he's like, well, I have a six 30 available. And I'm like, that is not happening. Mm -hmm. Um, Like my earliest time I work out with him is 10 30 in the morning. So, um, I mean, that's good. I'm getting it done, but bad that I get it started so late. Are you a night owl as well? Not really. No. Okay. Perfect. I can be, I mean, if I have something to do, I will stay up and work at night. That's, I don't mind that. Um, that's not a problem, but if I don't have something to do, I don't stay up late really. Perfect. Um, Caroline, you, you are not in yes. So what, what stops you from having purposeful time right now? I think being just being organized, being caught up and just being so busy, and especially when the market is crazy. Um, I think that's probably it for me. And Stacy, have you read the book, Make Your Bed? I have not. Okay. Make Your it's Bed. It's a good one. It's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. Um, so, so the question was there, Caroline, so you feel you're not organized. Is that right? Uh, I feel like I'm not, um, structured, organized enough, maybe to be purposeful. Okay. I don't know. Does that make sense? Um, so curious as you all write your goals out, your, your whole life goals, uh, where do the actions, the A to B action, right? So we were starting here and then whatever the goal is, we'll call that B. Where does the action live, right? Are we putting that in our calendars? Does our calendar really exist for accomplishing this? We've got a yes, we've got no's. Okay, we've got yeses. Okay, good, Jill, nice. Um I've started my, I did my 411, mm-hmm. my one through five, my 411, but I almost need like, you know, the 411 goes down to your weekly activities, but it's mm-hmm. like this, this much space. I'm like, well, now I need a daily one. <laughs> is that, is that even a thing that you need a daily sheet that you can like write to make sure I did this, these five calls, these five letters, you know? And I, I, so I started looking for a daily tracker and I couldn't find one of those. So I, I feel like that might be something I need to find to help me even get even more, more uh-huh. detail than I need to be. Daria says she has a daily tracker uh, on top of 411. There you go. Perfect. So she, if you don't mind yeah. sharing that. Yeah. Uh, she made one in Excel. She says, perfect. Love it. Um Guys, that's what I've found. I I was coaching a guy today in Florida. Uh, No. Yeah, Florida. And he was sharing with me all of his goals. He was sharing with you everything. I said, pull out your calendar. Pull out his calendar. I said, what what, what is that? What are you showing me here? 
And, and he had things. So, so I did not judge. I literally went through everything that he had on there. And I said, do you do that? No. Why is it live on your calendar? I want to. Okay. But if you're not doing it, take it off. So he took it off. Moving down to the next thing. Do you do that? Sometimes. Sometimes. Okay. Is it in alignment with your goal? Uh, it is. Okay. So what stops you from doing it all the time? My commitment. And that's what it boiled down to, right? Was the word commitment. The word commitment, gang, is what we really need to focus on. And again, I know I'm talking up here macro-wise, but I want you guys to really pay attention to what are you committing to? Are you writing stuff down on your goal sheet that feels good? Or are you writing stuff down that you're going to commit to? Okay. I'm not going to get on a soapbox here, but I can because y'all are cheating yourself if you're writing stuff down and you're not staying committed to it. My dad used to teach me all the time, Adam, you'll never have a superpower. You can't fly. You can't th see through walls, but you have one superpower and that's your word, right? And that's what he used to always tell me. Your word is the only superpower you have. So who are you giving your word to? Just yourself or are you giving it to somebody else? In this case, you better share your one sheet with somebody else because you're giving your word then that you're going to accomplish that. And if you're going to accomplish that, it better live in your calendar right? It better live because you're all doers. You're here. You're doers. You are all doers. You get, excuse the language, shit done. You're doers. Prove it to yourself in your calendar, right? Where does, if you don't have a budget, right? So I'm going to change subject, but it's the same thing. If you have a budget, you're telling your pennies where to go, right? And if your penny doesn't have a name, where will that penny go? wherever it wants to, right? That penny will get spent any which way you want it to get spent without it having a name. If your time doesn't have a name, where does it go? Wherever it wants to, right? It goes, it goes, you go to the bathroom and you start having a conversation with Betty Sue about a pumpkin pie that you're going to make for, and it, it just goes, and it, it just goes, right? It just goes. I have a team leader that I'm coaching right now, uh, and he was, he was, well, he had a little bit, he had, he had some fallout that he wasn't expecting, but end of De uh, November, he was 10 away from being a black belt. And what a black belt means is that he will have netted 60 agents in a year and love this guy to death. We are sprinting. Uh, he's only his second year in, into uh, the team leader role. And so he gets on the call. This is the start of the year, start, start of December. This is how far are you? And he says, I'm 10. I said, okay. You're actually, how many agents will you lose this month? Oh, I don't think I'll lose that many. He says, I said, no, that's not true. What's your, been your average? And so we figured out his average and it was about five. He'd been losing five. I said, you're 15 behind. And the look on his face just left, right? He, he was, oh gosh, he looked defeated. So we, 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 we developed a plan and he was a plan. We went to his calendar first and erased everything. Literally everything, everything parties, ALC meetings, um, uh, team meetings, everything. We erased everything. And we put onto his calendar everything that he needed to do to net or gross 15 agents to net 10, okay? Uh, and he had to have, because of the year, uh, the season we're in the year, 30 appointments accomplished by today. 30 appointments from December 1st to today he had to have. So we had to strategically put it into his calendar. He's at 30 today. He's at 30 today because he committed to it. He has three more to go and he will have, he will be at a black belt team leader in his second year in the role because he committed. And here's what he told me. He said, I didn't trust you because I was afraid of everything else that was going to need me. That's what he said in the beginning uh, of, of, of the month, basically. And he reiterated it today. And he said, I lied and I apologize because nothing else mattered. Nothing else mattered. He got some dumpster fires, but they didn't need him. They got put out. Nothing else mattered. So I'm sharing that as an example because Dan is crushing it. Where are you going to crush it? Where are you going to commit to doing the thing you said you would do? Long after the original mood you set it in has left you. That's the definition of commitment, right? Doing the thing you said you would do long after the original mood you set it in has left you. Okay, 
Um, soapbox off. Here we go. Let's get into some more coaching. How are we doing so far? Are we having fun yet? Yeah. Andrew says yes. Okay. Um, we got utilizing command. Was well, did that help with the more purposeful time? Mm-hmm. Did that help? Yes. Okay. I realized I need coaching again, Adam. <laughs> I just Andrew, looked at my you... husband. I was like, honey, I need coaching. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> utilizing command. Well, okay, hold on. I want to move on. So more purposeful time. We heard what to do. Someone give us some action items that they're going to take. By the way, remember this is being recorded and you will be committing to this. (laughs) I'm going to actually put things in my calendar that I know darn well need to be there that are not there and make sure that I just stick to my time blocks. Excellent. Who's going to hold you accountable to that? This guy right here. Gotcha. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Put something. Put something up. By the way, right. Put put it. Put a takeaway from it. If you don't, gone. Right. Whatever that is. Whatever it is. Make it. Make it. Put a pit in your stomach. Make yeah. whatever that gone is a pit in your stomach. Okay. Yep. I want it to be a pit in your stomach. Okay. Who else? What are the action items you're gonna do? I'm going to get a daily tracker and commit daily Okay. and a takeaway because that's, that's kind of a big deal. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. Find accountability partners that scare you guys. I'm going to tell you right now, you want to get from A to B faster, find accountability partners that scare you. You may, many of you have heard this, probably this story. Uh, I got a group every Wednesday that I meet with and I have for the last seven years uh, and if we don't get our stuff done, it's a thousand dollars, and a thousand dollars goes into a bucket. And so this is in the very beginning. I may or may not have owed a few thousand dollars. And uh, they said, Adam, what do you want us to do with your money? And it was November. We were buying turkeys for the homeless. And they said, uh, I said, go buy go buy as many turkeys as you can for the homeless. One guy said yes. One guy said yes. One guy said yes. And one guy said no. And he's like, why would we do something like that? You wasted your time, but we're gonna waste your money. I was like, oh, okay. What are you going to do? Here's what they did. They came back the next week. They mean this guy. Um, and I had to send him the money. He went and bought $2,000 worth of champagne. He videotaped himself pouring it out. Yeah, pouring it out, pouring it out. And then he came back and with everyone now on his side, he said, Adam, here's what you have to do. You have to go downtown Charleston, find a homeless person and apologize to them that you couldn't buy them a turkey because you wasted your time guess who had to do it i had to do it right guess who didn't show up (laughs) ill prepared next time me right that's accountability right that's accountability that will scare you and it was an expensive learning lesson and again i've made mistakes but again i'm not going to make that same mistake twice so find accountability partners that scare you put a put a pit in your stomach if you want to accomplish something okay let's go to um i would say say utilizing command Get with like Andrea or get with some other people on here that use that, use that at a high level because I, I do not. Um, but get with some other people in there and maybe make a list of everything that you are either confused with or need help with and then go find the who's that can help you with that. That's a good Andrea, idea. Isn't it Vicky at Dublin who is I'm, our command expert? Vicky? I've been scheduling appointments with Jen Vickers or as Jen I need Vickers. them, but making a list is a good idea. And then- yeah booking maybe two appointments with, with her at a time so I can have an hour. That's a good idea. Yeah, don't, don't I think waste one of the time. problems is that they they don't have a lot. It's command isn't set up for teams yet. Mm. And so trying to figure out how to get something sent out on it's our definitely team. getting there. So and that was one thing, Stacy, when we came over to consultants was You know, I, I had mastered the solo command, you know, there was a lot of features that had come out with team command, you know, Mm -hmm. towards the end of my leadership at greater Columbus. And, um, we've been sitting with Jen Vickers after every office meeting for an hour, once a month, you know, Amber and I, because Amber is not good with technology at all. And so when her and I will sit down with her, we'll kind of just have our hit list of all the things we want to make sure that we cover. And she's really good about, you know, making sure that there's time to cover those things and that you feel comfortable with it. So, um, but I've got an Excel sheet too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And she's got an Excel sheet with all the links that will take you out to the different videos that she's recorded of her trainings. Yeah, I've got that. And most of that I can do, like I say, I can do all the solo stuff, but when I tried to do a campaign, it wouldn't go out because you can't send them from teams now. And um, so, and I'm kind of on my own because my daughter's my partner on my team and she's about ready to have a baby in any time. So she's, Congratulations. <laughs> she's tough right now, but um, yeah, I'll get my list together and then Jen can help me. Yeah, get your list together. And Stacey, what I'd also say is um, nothing stops you, though. Right. Don't let anything stop you. If, if you're at a roadblock and you're at, or you're at an impasse and you can't figure something out, there is a solution or a resource out there. Go find it. Right. If, if specifically in the campaign space. I mean, again, those emails, you we've got to stay in front of our clients, period. Yeah. Right? And there, there can't be a derailed train there. So you figure out a solution for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm, for sure. Um, Jill, I think you said big goal. That's what I wrote down. Uh, never done. Never done. Oh, I originally talked about listing presentation, but I feel like that's so um, granular that I can definitely get with somebody in my office about that. That's totally fine. Okay, perfect. Does anybody do pre-listing packets anymore? I honestly don't know where to find them. I've looked for them in command as well, and I don't know where to find them. Yeah. Um, this was a long time ago, and I'll tell you, though, we had really big success with this in Los Angeles. Pre-listing packets were something that, I mean, it was, it was, it was, number one, it was a cutthroat business. This was 2000. 2008 ish, maybe a little before, maybe before the crash. But what we would do is we would send out a pre listing packet, which was all about the team. I was in the Keller Williams Beverly Hills office on a guy named Lee Ziff's team. And we developed a pre listing packet that we would send out 24 hours ahead of time, sharing everything there was to know about the team, number one, sharing everything there was to know about the marketing and sharing everything there was to know. Uh, about us selling their house, even now I would recommend getting with leadership on this, but we would even put a price in there of what we would sell their house for. Okay. Meaning what the list price was. And um, we would then have in there a call to action. If you believe all of this is in alignment with selling your house, put this packet on your dining room table with the keys on top of it. And we'll see you Tuesday at three o'clock. Right. So we knew when we walked in, if we saw that packet on the on the dining room table with the keys on top of it, it was our listing. If we didn't see that on there, we knew we had a lot of work to do. OK, so in this marketplace, listings are still um, I mean, they're, they're always going to be the backbone of your business and listings are still relatively hard to come by. Is is that a true statement? I know it's here in Charleston. Yeah. So whatever you can do to stand out in front of everybody else, start doing it, right? Start doing it. Become the market expert. If you are not the local economist based on the numbers, become one, right? Remember the old school language of real estate, Andrew, I know you remember that. The language of real estate, it tracked, I think it was six, seven, or eight different metrics. Know all of those though. Right, closed units, average sales price, average list price, well, whatever it may be, get into your market data so you can become the expert in your space. You want to list and sell more houses, you got to know the details, you got to know the data. Yep. So pre listing packets, in my opinion, are, are, are lost art. Uh, I would imagine you guys have a massive office. Um, someone's got to be doing them. And if they're not, go find somebody else. It's a large company pre-listing packets, separate yourself from everybody else. And yes, Jill, you're right. You can get with anybody probably in the office and they'll help you on the specifics of listings. So anybody have any good uh, rules of thumb that they go with in uh, when, when you're going into a listing appointment related to your listing presentation or good closes? Those are always my favorite. Anybody? I don't know. I guess I just go in... Um like I already have it. That's good. <laughs> nice. Like I just, I, 
I'm already listing it. I go in and I just act and behave like I'm already listing it. So very sumptive. That's good. Does anybody have a good uh, objection handler that says I'll, I'm interviewing two other agents or more agents? Anybody have a, a go to that they go? Gotcha. My I, I can't use this as a listing presentation close, but when I was selling um, in the models, if somebody said I need to think about it when they were leaving, I said to them, usually if someone isn't ready to make a decision, they have questions that are left unanswered. What questions do you still need answered in order for me to help you make your decision? Love it, Jill. It's exactly where I was heading. Now, what happens? What do we traditionally do when we ask an amazing question like Jill? What, what do we do, right? So Stacey, I'm ready to list. Oh, no, no. I need to think about it. And uh, and then you give me that question. And I come back to you and I, I give you an answer. What do we normally do in that situation? If they say they need to think about it and you say, what what is it exactly you need to think about? Yeah, they give you an answer. Then what do we do? I don't know. <laughs> we solve their problem, right? I don't want you to solve their problem. Here's what I want you to do. So Jill, that was amazing. Here's what I would say. When you use that question and they give you an answer, use the three amigos. What else? What else? Is there anything else? What else? What else? Is there anything else? That, those are the best three questions. Remember your job, your job is to empty the objection bucket. I want you to think of it like a, like a, like a, like a water bottle. Okay. When you ask someone a question, they're going to give you the surface answer that's coming to them. You're not, you're not even through the water. You're not even through the bottle yet. When you ask the three amigos, the water goes down a little bit because the more comes out. Yes. The next one more comes out. You ask the last one. We should be at the bottom because we're asking, is there anything else? And they're going to say, no, you're going to say, great. So if I can handle this, this, and this, are you ready to list with me today? Well, I guess, I guess I would be. Great. You know, and again, we've all heard this many different ways. Hey, no problem. I know you have another agent coming over. It would be my pleasure to call Andrea and tell her that she doesn't have to come so I can, so she doesn't have to waste her time, right? That's being a little cheeky, a little silly, but at the same time, it was always fun to do, right? So what specifically would stop you from listing with me today is a very good question to ask. What specifically, the word specifically, remember what? Narrows the brain down. What specifically, what specific would stop you from, from listening with me when? Today. The word today creates urgency. Well, the list price isn't high enough. Okay, great. What else? Well, you want to put it on the market tomorrow. I'm going to wait a week. Okay, great. What else? Um, you told me I had to paint the house and I don't want to paint the house. Okay, great. Is there anything else? Nope, I think that's it. Okay, fantastic. So if I can handle price and we can handle when we want to put it on the market and we can talk about not painting the house, you ready to list with me today? Well, maybe. Okay, great. What else? If they say maybe, what else? Right? Okay, sorry, I can go deep with that. That's... I, I love asking questions and uh, you're right. Whoever said that you go in, Caroline, you go in acting like it is yours, not being arrogant, but at the same time, there is no one better than you, right? And it is yours to lose. One of my coaches used to always say in the recruiting space, Adam, they're walking in at a yes. You're talking them into a no, right? Okay. Uh, listings. Good. Got that one handled. Uh, different ways to lead generate. Ooh, my favorite. Who came up with that one? I forget. That was me. Stacey. <laughs> Stacey, I want you to go memorize page 138 of the Mem uh, MREA book. Okay. That has all the active and passive forms of lead generation. Yep. 138. You have, you have it there in front of you? I do. And I probably even have it bookmarked. <laughs> Perfect. Is that... It should be on the bottom of the page. It shows all the different yeah. active and passive forms of lead generation. Perfect. Yeah. Which one have you mastered so far? 
in the active space. In the what space? Active. The active? Mm -hmm. Um. Face to face, I guess. Um, networking. I mean, most of my business is from referrals and. Perfect. What percentage of your business is from referrals? Probably. Um, I mean, probably ninety because up Good. until this point. I've been focusing all of my marketing on my existing clients instead of getting those people that are in my phone and my people that are in my Google contacts uploaded and adding them to my newsletter. Like my e-newsletter, I'm only sending my clients and it wasn't until all this business planning and everything. I was like, why am I only sending that to my client? There's so many more people that I could send it to. Um, but then trying to get all those people in there. So that's where I'm trying to expand and make sure that I'm reaching out to more people than just my client base. Here's the name of the game. The name of the game, if you want to build a relationship type business, you want to build a referral based business, you need to track the number of referrals you receive. Okay. Your job is to teach the rest of the people, right? So this is how I have everyone break down their database. A plus is someone that gives you two or more referrals in a calendar year, not closed, just gives you referrals. And A is someone that gives you one referral. And then everybody else, we call them friends. Because what do our friends give us? Not a damn thing, right? <laughs> so yeah, our job is to teach those friends how to become A's or A pluses. Now, I want to play this game with you here real quick. What do I have? What do I have? What do I have next? Oh, okay. So here's the game. Everybody unmute yourselves. We're going to play a game. And you can say, you, you can say this out loud. I'm going to say the industry, you say the brand that comes top of mind. Are you ready? Here we go. Coffee. Starbucks. 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 Expo House. Tennis Nike. shoes. Nike. 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 Reebok. Airlines. Southwest. Southwest. Yeah. Women's handbags. Coach. Yeah. Louis. Louis Vuitton. Hey. Watches. Rolex. Ooh, that was almost the same one. Okay, I'm going to say this last one. You have to answer honestly. Right hand, do I have everyone's honesty here? Okay, good, good. Real estate agent. Me. Me. Kelly <laughs> Schreier. <laughs> okay. So this is the fun part of this game is <laughs> that last part is how your database thinks, Right. So if you're if we play this game with your database and we get to the word real estate agent or real estate team or real estate whatever and they're not saying your name you're not being memorable enough. Okay? We've got to get them to think and remember us. We've got to create experiences that are lasting. I kid you not, I used to send my database birthday cards when it was my birthday. For my birthday, I would love for you to send me a referral. It always got a fun little smile. And again, that's not the first probably time you've heard that. But man, that was always so fun. Because my phone would ring and say, hey, Adam, happy birthday. It's Bob Smith. We haven't talked in a long time. Remember, you sold one, two, three, four Main Street with me. And I'd say, fantastic, Bob. Who do you know that's looking to buy, sell, or invest? Nobody. Great. Do you mind if I call you in a month and I ask you again? Sure. Call me back. I'd love to talk to you again. Right? Be memorable. If they're not saying your name, then some they're saying somebody else's name. Mm -hmm. Yep. Get into the lead generation game on page 138 at a really, really high level. Okay, guys, I got to run. I'm two minutes late to my next one. This has Thank been you. fun. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Happy holidays. And if there's ever anything I can do for you, you just email me. I'm here for you all. Thanks, Thanks. Adam. Thanks, Thank guys. you. See Bye. you. Bye.